In this tutorial, we're going to cover the following topics, adding custom fonts, using a custom font, and creating a custom font extension. If you are familiar with adding custom fonts to an iOS project in UI kit, you can skip to the next chapter as this process is the same in a Swift UI project. The first thing we need to do is open up the navigation panel and right click on the project folder and select the add files to. Now we want to navigate to the folder where you have your font saved. Once you have the folder open, select the font. Before clicking add, make sure that copy items if needed is checked and add to targets is also checked. Now let's click add. Now select the project in the navigation panel. Then under the targets, select your project. Next, you're gonna to navigate to the info tab and select any item in the key area. As you hover over the selected item, you will see a plus minus button appear. Click on the plus button and inside of the key, type fonts provided by application and hit return. Now with the fonts provided by application selected, click on the disclosure arrow. When you click on the disclosure arrow, you will see item zero and it's type set to string. Under value, type the font name, including the extension. Whenever I use fonts, I always like to print out the name. This will ensure that it is embedded correctly, but it will also give me the exact spelling used. Using the font file name doesn't always match. Let's open up the app file. This is the file usually named after your project name followed by app. Here, we're gonna add an init method first. Next, inside of the init method, we will call print fonts, which we will create next. Now that we have our init method calling print fonts, let's create this method. First, we're going to add the function and we're going to name it print fonts. Next, we need to add a variable for our font family names. So let's add let font family names equals UI font dot family names. Now that we have our font family names, we want to loop through them and get each name. So let's start with a for loop. So for family name in font family names. We wanna print this out, so let's make it easier by first adding a print statement. Inside of this print statement, we'll add a bunch of dashes. This will allow us to see where each of the font families start. And then we'll add another print statement. This print statement will allow us to print out each of the font family names. Now that we have our family name, we want to be able to print each of the names for the family. So let's create this variable. Let's start with let names equals UI font dot font names for family name. And then inside of there, we'll pass family name. And finally, we want to print those names out. So let's add our last print statement, parenthesis, font names. And let's do two equals arrow bracket, backslash, parenthesis, names. Now that our print font method is done, next hit Command R to build and run the project. In the console, you will see all of the fonts you have access to in your project. In the bottom right of the screen, we can filter the console. Type your font name in the filter. Once your font name appears in the console, copy that name. We will use it in just a minute. Now we are ready to use our custom font. Open up the content view file by hitting Command Shift O and typing content and then selecting the content view file. We're gonna go ahead and delete all of the contents inside of the body. Now inside of the body, we're gonna add a text view. Inside of the quotes, we'll put Arya Stark. And then after the parenthesis, we're gonna type dot font dot custom quotes, add your font name here, and we'll set this to 24. Hit the reload preview button, and you will see that your newly added font is displaying. Next, let's select the device settings button at the bottom of the preview screen and toggle the dynamic type button. 
Here, you can see that our newly added font is supported by dynamic type. We could stop here, but the one thing that I don't like about using this version of custom fonts is that this could be error prone. I would prefer not to use string literals for our font names. If we create an extension, we can make it so that we don't have to use string literals when using custom fonts. Let's create a new Swift file by hitting Command N and name it Custom Font. After the import, let's create a new enum and we're gonna name this Custom Font. Next, inside of our enum, let's add a case and call it regular and set it equal to the custom font name that we used earlier. Now let's create an extension that we can use with our newly created custom font enum. So let's create another new file by hitting Command N. And let's name this font plus extension. First, I'm gonna delete the comments and then I'm gonna change the import statement to Swift UI. Let's add our extension for font. Now that we have our extension, we now need to create a custom function. So let's start with a static function. We're gonna call it custom, add our parentheses. We're gonna add an underscore space font, and we're gonna set it to a custom font. Next, add a comma, size, colon, CG float. Here, we're gonna return a Swift UI dot font. Now we're gonna use the custom font that we used earlier, but instead we will pass in our custom font that we just created. Next, type swiftui.font.custom font.raw value, comma, size colon size. We are now passing in our custom font by passing in the raw value of our newly created enum. Doing this allows us to pass in the font name that we set to our enum which now gives us more control and makes it less error prone. Now let's go back to content view, command shift O, content, enter, and let's replace our string literal with dot regular. If you reload previews, you will now see that nothing has really changed as far as our previews are concerned. But in our code, we can now use dot syntax instead of string literals. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to be alerted when new content is released.